Hello, my name is Walt Schoenborn from AntMini.com and welcome to today's webinar. We are pleased to present to you Advanced Connectivity and Interoperability to Drive Better Patient Outcomes, sponsored by InterSystems. We've got a great program for you today featuring two major thought leaders within the industry. Firstly, we have Leanne Essa, Head of Marketing for North America from Gerbay. We also have Jeff Freed, Director of Product Management data platforms and system development at InterSystems. Please stay tuned for a live Q&A session after the program. Enjoy the presentation. Thank you, Walt. I'm Leanne Essay from Gerbay, and thank you, Jeff and InterSystems for inviting me to participate on the webinar today. I really appreciate it. But before I go into our experience with InterSystems, I'd like to just start out with a quick background on Gerbet. So we're a global company headquartered in France with an entire portfolio of solutions for imaging facilities. Our roots began in the pharmaceutical industry with contrast media. So we're a pharmaceutical group that's been supporting healthcare professionals specializing in both diagnostic and interventional medical imaging since 1926. That's when we began offering contrast media to help enhance the reading of imaging studies throughout the imaging suite. And you can see that we do have contrast solutions for MRI, CT, X-ray, and interventional procedures. We also offer medical devices, such as microcatheters for interventional procedures and diagnostic devices such as power injectors to inject that contrast media during studies to help with image reading. Again, we have injector solutions for the MR suite, the CT suite, cardiac cath lab, and interventional procedures. And these solutions also work in the urology suite, in surgery centers, and cancer centers. And we do this through our Liebel Flarsheim brand. And then we even have imaging devices for the urology suite. And we do this also through our Liebel Flarsheim brand. Most recently, Gerbet has begun offering digital solutions that are complementary to the various stages of imaging studies. This has been in part due to growing customer requests for help in managing the data from these imaging studies. Data, as we know, continues to grow exponentially, and our customers began asking for a way to order contrast plus injectors, plus have data management capabilities, all from Gerbet as a single source provider. So we offer contrast and care, which I'll be going into in just a few minutes, and that's a complete contrast media injection management system with a patient-centered approach to diagnosis and treatment. We also have Dose and Care, a state-of-the-art radiation dose management solution to monitor patient radiation exposure. And then we are also a reseller of the IBM Watson Imaging Patient Synopsis, which is a cloud-based AI solution to seamlessly integrate radiologist workflow and present a single view of structured and unstructured data to the radiologist during readings. But today I'm going to focus on contrasting care, which is an integrated IT solution that groups together data on imaging examinations that involve an injection of contrast. So this data could include information on the contrast agent, information on the injection protocol that was used, and even information on the patient. And it's that information that interfaces with the information systems that are used in conjunction with radiology, including the risk system, the PACS system, and the EMR, and possibly the hospital information system. Contrast in care improves traceability and efficiency while simplifying the decision-making process at imaging facilities. So Contrast and Care enables these imaging facilities to collect, archive, review, and share patient injection data, including the contrast media data and the saline injection data. 
It can also record things like adverse events. It can capture injector activity. It can capture information on the EGFR or estimated glomerular filtration rate. It can capture pre-exam alerts such as previously reported allergies or expired products. Contrast and Care was basically designed with connectivity, productivity, quality, and safety in mind. These are some of the functional modules of Contrast and Care. Users view a patient injection history, contrast, volume, and flow rate used, as well as things like the EGFR clearance results in a single location. Users can manage pro uh, product recalls, and contract, contra Contrast and Care offers users the ability to review injection protocols, review work lists, and evaluate statistics to identify trends on injection activity, as well as the trends on the use of contrast media. Data that's generated by the injectors is sent automatically to contrast and care following each examination. Analytics generate meaningful data for the providers, including facility-wide contrast use, which in turn would assist them in budgeting and supply PAR levels. So here you can see a depiction of how contrast and care functions within the imaging facility. You can see multiple instances of the directional and bi-directional exchange of information. For example, on the left side, you see the injector data collector or IDC box, sending injection information from the connected injectors to contrast and care. Across the bottom, Contrast and Care has the ability to share bi-directional data, such as work lists across multiple modalities. And these modalities could be CT, uh, MR, interventional radiology, and cardiac cath labs. And it also communicates through DICOM and through HL7 messaging with the RIS, the PACS, the EMR, or HIS, or any other information system at the facility. The barcode reader, which is shown on the right, collects product information and patient identification information and sends to contrast and care on the existing departmental PCs and workstations. So there's no requirement for any additional workstations to use contrast and care. And then there are authorized remote access capabilities on a variety of devices and the application would use the cloud as a remote server for secure data archiving. The functionality of Contrast and Care includes things like the collection of injection data, such as volumes and pressure flow rates, which can be retrieved from the injector or manually entered. The collection of contrast media and saline data that were used in the injection, either through the use of barcode scanners or through manual entry of the contrast injections that may have been done by hand, not necessarily even through an injector, but any injection done by hand can be captured as well. And the ability to assign secure user profiles, such as radiologists, the supply chain manager, pharmacists, quality managers, or any other profile of a user that's required to meet the needs of the facility. But one of the main challenges that facilities face is the inability to communicate between multiple systems. Applications are advancing and becoming more and more sophisticated, but it, that doesn't mean that system communication has to be more complicated. That connectivity between systems to retrieve data from the facility systems was optimized with the help of inner systems. And so how is inner systems helping with our deployment of contrast and care? We're using the inner systems Iris for Health solution. So that solution is a robust and trusted data platform specifically engineered 
to extract value from healthcare data. It allows Gerbet to offer a robust injection data management system that's easy to use, leverages analytics, and is a scalable solution. Iris for Health supports contrast and care with speed to value for our customers, speed to scale for our customers, and speed to connectivity as it's deployed across multiple systems in a healthcare facility. This is uh, Jeff Fried. I just want to interject, Leanne, how uh, impressive it was to see Gerbet get so quickly to value. Um, so it's very gratifying. Thank you, Jeff. That and that was great. I I know that the development process with Gerbet has been very um, collaborative between us and InterSystems, and so we're appreciative of of your work and we're looking forward to doing more in the future. Let me just show a little bit about how Iris for Health is now intertwined with uh, Contrast and Care and supporting us. So here you can see how Iris Health supports Contrast and Care functions of things like bi-directional remote access, bi-directional third-party connectivity with systems like the EMR and then bi-directional enhanced analytics, all while enabling secure archiving in the cloud. Iris for Health has helped to make contrast and care better, faster, and more efficient. Yeah, my, it, my impression and experience here was that working together with Gerbet to work in different cloud platforms it, it's ended up actually in Microsoft Azure uh, on a global basis, that's um, that worked quite well too. Right, and I know that InterSystems can work with basically any cloud cloud offering, but but we did select Microsoft Azure as our cloud solution for development, and uh, and we've been very pleased with with that and with the assistance from InterSystems on that. So this is again, just a depiction of how we're working today. So from the secure cloud-based database of clinical data to interoperability across systems to analytics, the InterSystems Iris Health Platform has helped us to optimize the integration of contrast and care into the IT systems of imaging facilities. And so basically, you know, what makes InterSystems technology, te technology unique for us is that it includes advanced interoperability and data normalization technology. And that's helped us provide the fastest route to all of the clean data that Gerbet needs to get our applications up and running quickly while delivering sustainable value. And we appreciate InterSystems and all of the work that you've been doing with us. And we look forward to our ongoing activities, Jeff. Well, thank you so much, Leanne. It's been uh, wonderful to work with Gerbet, both because you know your business so well and because you have the vision to take it to the next level as we all get into the, the new world of digital care and of distributed systems. Um, so I couldn't ask for a, uh, uh, a better partner than, than Gerbet. And I, I wanna uh, talk a little bit for the audience about inner systems and a couple of other examples, especially uh, image oriented ones for this audience. Uh, but first to uh, reiterate what Leanne has actually said very well, uh, Iris for Health is a product specifically built for builders, for people that want to make applications that uh, are, are very data intensive. And we've built in uh, both analytics of various types, BI and NLP, interoperability with many, many different systems and specific healthcare protocols and models in order to make it easy to build, 
and quick time to value. And the interoperability element that helped Gerbet get patient data into the picture has been a mainstay for intersystems for decades. It's fairly typical these days to have people that are active working with fire because I've seen a huge uptake in fire. And of course, this is, if you're not familiar with it, this is the fast healthcare interoperability resources. Um, so a uh, built-in fire resource repository and transformations in Iris for Health help people get to this new standard from HL7v2, which has many, ver many variants over time, uh, from CDA or other patient uh, data records, and from uh, many other protocols. And I have seen uh, lately huge interest in FHIR. We've recently come out with our FHIR R4, the first normative version, uh, as well as protocols. We are working with places like uh, the NHS on country-specific variants as they get into to, um, child health issues. We're working with the standards groups on some COVID-specific uh, elements and resources that will be fast-tracked out. I've also seen uh, a surprising uptake in some older protocols, X12, especially when that uh, involves payers and financials in the mix, and DICOM. Uh, DICOM's been a big mainstay for the radiology world for a long time, but uh, there's been a, a big uptake in imaging, especially as interoperability with fire becomes more common. And as we see more uh, AI sort of oriented things and more remote elements. Uh, in addition to Gerbet, we have uh, many, many uh, customers that work with our technology. One of them is InTouch Health, which is uh, probably the premier virtual health platform in the US. As you can imagine, in today's pandemic, they're extremely busy enabling clinics, home care, and remote care of a lot of types. And similar to what Leanne described with Gerbet, they use Iris for Health to connect patient data in from EMRs and other patient systems uh, and connect those into their intersystem sort of telehealth elements. And there's, there's some really cool things they've partnered with uh, iRobot to have virtual health stations that move around. Uh, and they've connected using Iris for Health into image systems using DICOM, uh, as well as scheduling systems at over 3,600 locations around the world. So the same scenario that Leanne, you were describing about connecting into EHRs uh, has worked well for InTouch. And these patterns, uh, I notice a lot in the, uh, in the healthcare industry at large, including uh, some of our uh, medical technology customers, uh, such as uh, GE Health. Uh, the med uh, medical device companies, you can read sort of these classic elements of combining clinical and device data. Uh, Medtronic does this extremely well with their devices uh, using our technology. Um, and the ability to work across interoperability across many systems has helped people build next-gen healthcare applications 
like contrast and care. Um, and we're, we're proud of having helped our customers get to get to value quickly. Um, I've noticed a lot of uptake in applications that apply intelligence to images. I'll highlight one. This is actually from uh, a customer of ours, Canon Medical Systems, uh, headquartered in Japan, of course. And this is a, called their clinical cockpit, uh, which connects with, uh, with PACS, but also with EHR, examination systems, treatment systems, uh, on a data integration basis, very similar to the scenario that Leanne described in connecting to EHRs at often multiple EHRs or uh, in some cases, emergency systems uh, and work with their, uh, their radiology images. Images are taken from DICOM, which is a uh, not a particularly good format for machine learning and transformed into uh, things that can use uh, neural network systems, which are particularly good for image patterns to accelerate the radiologist job. This is not replacing a diagnostician, but often you can highlight things that might be uh, much smaller or much uh, harder to pick up on uh, and augment a radiologist's uh, workflow or uh, call things to their attention and provide more uh, information easily at their fingertips. So the clinical cockpit has been extremely successful in Japan, uh, now is spreading into Europe and uh, has done exactly this pattern, working with radiology images and then uh, using machine learning on top of them. Uh, with the COVID pandemic, uh, I'm expecting more of this. I think uh, this is a partner called High Medical out of China, where they've had probably the longest time to get used to today's world and the data uh, inner systems is powers a lot of the frontline systems. Uh, our technology was inside the EMR used to deploy the emergency hospitals in Hunan. Uh, same thing in Northern Italy. Uh, and it's that sort of healthcare focus and high touch that's helped us with this. And High Medical has uh, taken work applying um, AI to x-rays and CT scans, which uh, was originally trained on pneumonia to COVID-19 signatures. Of course, pneumonia is often involved uh, and uh, use this very effectively. Uh, they have a demonstrator for people that are interested that's running uh, free off of uh, AWS. And we also have uh, examples of applying uh, both machine learning and also uh, uh, simple analytics in our developer community. I, I posted a link here. You can see uh, that takes you into these, these demos and examples. Uh, another thing that's actually been very uh, high uptake with COVID is a example application we have for oximeters because uh, powering a like a pulse oximeter is a is a great way to look at somebody's um, uh, progression with the disease even before uh, they have to go to the hospital uh, inner systems has is just coming to market with a new facility for machine learning uh, for the past couple of years, we've been focused on people that have expert data scientists, people like uh, the uh, Canon Medical Systems, or uh, uh, we have a, a partner called HPI that works a lot with hospital operations. 
uh, we have a, a new facility called Integrated ML, which allows a developer that's familiar with SQL to tap into the power of machine learning. And this works by exposing a few additional keywords in SQL. These are called DDL statements for those uh, fellow nerds among you. Uh, by simply saying create model, you have created a machine learning model and identified what data, often directly within your application, um, can be used for training, which you then use for, in a train model statement. And then you can use the prediction, uh, that verb anywhere in SQL. You can use it in joins, in sample statements, in materialized views, so that you can do machine learning right where the data lives. And we, behind the scenes, provide three choices of AutoML engines. If you're not familiar with it, AutoML is applying machine learning to machine learning. So choosing the right algorithms, choosing the right uh, features is uh, done for you behind the scenes. And we package at, uh, at no charge a default AutoML capability that uses uh, XGBoost, uh, one of the, the best explainable AI systems out there uh, that doesn't require you to know about machine learning and doesn't require you to, to set knobs. In fact, it's, it's, it's all packaged behind the scenes. We also uh, provide an option for an open source AutoML engine called H2O. Um, for the folks with data scientists that want to change all the knobs and plug in their own thing into H2O. And last but not least, we have a partnership with a company called Data Robot. It's probably the premier machine learning uh, AutoML company that has very strong technology for time series, uh, for what's called ML ops, managing models in production and making sure that they uh, don't drift over time. Uh, they also provide customer facing data scientists to help you in um, getting the most out of machine learning. So you can start very simply with SQL and then get much more sophisticated uh, using the data robot tools. Leanne mentioned that with Gerbet, we looked at a variety of different cloud platforms and settled on Microsoft Azure. Uh, InterSystems is dedicated to being uh, easy to deploy wherever you want. So some people call that multi-cloud. Uh, we want to make sure that people that want to run on AWS or Google Cloud Platform, or um, we support Tencent Cloud, uh, and not shown Alibaba in China, um, that you can do that easily. Uh, we're seeing a lot of hybrid deployments where people are either in different cloud platforms in different geographies or working on-prem uh, in some clinics in some geographies and on in the cloud in others. Uh, with the uh, COVID pandemic, many of our customers have done very rapid deployment for additional capacity using the cloud platforms. We also have made it easy to buy our technology in the same platforms by uh, listing in what is called the cloud marketplace offering. So you can try things for free, and get a developer edition in, in either uh, Amazon, Microsoft, or Google, uh, and uh, then click and run in production using your 
cloud uh, providers uh, billing so that it's uh, you don't have to do any more work on the, the financial side. Uh, we provide the InterSystems Iris for Health in the Docker Hub so that those people that are building things uh, on a containerized basis with a DevOps pipeline can pull directly from that. Uh, and in the last uh, eight months we've been doing that, we've seen sort of like 18,000 downloads. It's, it's remarkable. Uh, now three, three and a half thousand a month. And we've done a lot of work with uh, something called Kubernetes, which is the orchestrator to run multiple containers uh, very easily. So um, customers like uh, Medtronic have very broad footprints and want to be able to, to serve many customers at the same time, often on their own instances. I want to highlight a, a little bit for those uh, folks in the audience that are interested in building with this uh, kind of technology. And specifically, uh, and I think uh, Gerbet gave us strong feedback about this, uh, we are very flexible about what language you work with. And we have a built in interoperability that allows you to pull in things from uh, a lot of very powerful components. For example, you might uh, use Kafka uh, for getting device data uh, using Java and might uh, connect in with other things using .NET or Python. I'm seeing a, a, a huge amount of uptake in in Python uh, over the last couple of years. Uh, we do have a developer community and a, a place for uh, templates and partner solutions called Open Exchange. In Open Exchange, you'll also find the um, COVID machine learning uh, templates that I described as well as uh, some things that are specifically for using fire. Uh, we've built in a uh, API management into Iris for Health, and that lets you uh, both work easily with fire and also publish your own APIs for other people to use. So just to to wrap it up before we have uh, questions, we've highlighted here the InterSystems Iris for Health data platform. Uh, that's what Gerbea has used for contrast and care. Uh, it's designed for people to build high performance health focused applications, uh, including analytics and machine learning capabilities. It's part of a broader range from intersystems that uh, really a, we're, we're reflecting the components and development technology for people that are building exciting solutions. The stuff highlighted here in yellow is Iris for Health. We provide as well a solution called HealthShare that uh, combines multiple sources of data into a unified patient record that's used in uh, many government and private health information exchanges worldwide, and a unified health information system called TrackCare that is used in a lot of laboratory environments as well as, as a uh, electronic medical record system. So that breadth uh, is, is quite unique and gives us a perspective that um, hopefully uh, helps all of our customers get to value quickly and run reliably. Uh, we've gotten uh, some very strong positive feedback from 
multiple uh, analysts on this front, uh, both for performance and customer uh, service. And I invite people that want to know more to come to our website, learn about inner systems. Uh, we have a easy to learn uh, set of information at gettingstartedhealth.intersystems.com. Includes a uh, ability to try this for free in a sandbox we spin up with two clicks in the cloud on your behalf. Uh, or you can uh, download things and use it at your leisure in your own desktop. So that gives you a sense of the Gerbet journey with contrast and care, the work with InterSystems and the InterSystems Iris for Health platform. I think um, we have some time for questions at this point. And I'll open it up. I would re remind you to look in your uh, Zoom screen for, for questions. And I have a, a, a few questions uh, here already. Um, there's one that is specifically about high medical and how machine learning helps diagnose pneumonia related to patient care. Uh, I think there's a longer story with this uh, and I invite you to follow up, drop me an email and I can send you a lot more material uh, about this. Uh, for those folks for whom there is a, uh, a long image, um, high medical has been able to have a much clearer diagnosis. Uh, now that's not everybody by a long shot has, uh, has medical images uh, of, of lung with, the, with COVID-19, but folks that do, that's proven to be quite effective. Um, there's a, a question for, for Leanne that is, uh, well, okay, I'll read this one. Uh, what other vendors besides InterSystems did you consider and what were your criteria for choosing them uh, with, okay. for contrast and care? You can still hear me, right, Jeff? Yes. Okay. Um, well, I can't, really, I can't really single out the other vendors that we looked at, I'd rather not, but I can tell you the criteria that we used um, when we selected InterSystems. So we were definitely looking for a group with a global experience, um, especially with global experience with integ integration optimization, because we've got contrast and care deploying in countries like um, Taiwan and Italy, and we needed that a, a comfort that that you had that global experience. Um, we were also specifically looking for a group with experience with connectivity to EMRs like Epic and Cerner. Um, so that was that was one of our top criteria. And we also were looking for a platform that was scalable. I think I kind of mentioned that in the in my um, talk, but um, we have a variety of customers of all different sizes. So the scalability of the, of the Iris Health Platform was key to, uh, to, to the partner that we ended up selecting um, in InterSystems. And then I think also the reputation of InterSystems. I mean, we wanted a, a group that was well known as experts in the industry. And I think you guys might have been one of the founding sponsors of HIMS way back when. And so, so the company is well known in the industry and uh, that was just another criteria. Um, we didn't want to go with a startup or uh, anyone with technology that was still in trial. We wanted a, something tried and, you know, t that could work and give good results. So that was, those were the main criteria when we were selecting a partner to help us with contrast and care. Well, the, the, the founding of HIMS was uh, before my time, personally. <laughs> but, uh, but yes, it's been, um, it's very nice being at InterSystems to, to uh, feel like we've been able to help a lot of people in the industry. I think we're often known as the underlying database 
inside of Epic, but uh, there's hundreds of, uh, of of other customers that are, we help in this area. Um, there's a question for me about how much data science experience do you need to do machine learning? Um, and I, I guess I will say this is probably because I was highlighting integrated ML and the fact that you don't need to uh, know machine learning to leverage it. Uh, so I would say that if you know SQL well and you know your data, you can in fact do machine learning. Now, to really go into production, you should learn machine learning. You probably do want someone that, um, for, at least for sophisticated applications, that that has a background. Uh, and I, I mentioned Data Robot as a as one of our partners that can help in this area and also uh, help the the data scientists be much more efficient because there's a scarcity of of, of talent and a scarcity of their time. So I, I wouldn't advise building a uh, autonomous vehicle without an expert machine learning person. And if you can certainly do, um, for example, we have a, a production ready, I think example of uh, readmission prediction in our developer community uh, that beats out lace quite handily and you can do that without um, without a professional data scientist um, but it's you, you can usually get some more out out of things when you uh, when you get deeper um, there's another question for me can you tell me the name of that docker hub from inner systems um, so uh, there is a, a a company called Docker, which is behind uh, most of the containerization. And there is a dockerhub.com, which is a directory of literally millions of containers. So if you go there and search for inner systems, you'll find uh, our products, uh, our, our, the, the developer editions of our products, which are free of charge. Uh, directly from there, or you can go to the Inner Systems uh, website, and the, the developer resources will take you through that step by step. Um, there's another question for Leanne, which is about your development process. Um, what has it been like? Uh, is there been a lot of things that you need to learn? Hmm. Um, well, I guess just my understanding from talking with our development teams, the, our primary development team on contrast and care is located in France, but my understanding is that the inner systems team in France has provided a really positive and collaborative experience for the Gerbe team. And um, from my understanding, I mean, it sounds like inner systems listens to our needs and um, contributes to our build environment and they're professional and very um, efficient when it comes to the cross collaboration. And then I know that our partnership now extends globally beyond France because we have um, some uh, interactions now in the US and some other countries. So just in general, I think from everything I've heard, the teams in France and our development side have been really pleased and excited to be able to accomplish a lot of the things that they were, we were struggling to build on our own, but, you know, in a partnership with InterSystems, now we can be even, you know, better than we were working toward early on in the project. Yeah, and Leanne, I, I personally did get a chance to uh, meet some of your team in France when I was over there earlier this year, this was before, this was in the days that we could actually travel and get <laughs> on airplanes. Right. Uh, so it's uh, uh, sharp folks. Um, I will, uh, there's only one question left. So I'll, I think we have time if anyone else uh, wants to put in uh, additional questions. 
I see one. Uh, oh, so keep keep the questions coming. Do you have any project developed in Iberia? Uh, and the answer is absolutely. Um, we have quite a number of customers in Barcelona and Madrid. Uh, actually, I was at a AI event in Madrid, also one you could travel two months ago. Uh, and we have offices in both Madrid and uh, and Barcelona. So we'd be happy uh, if you drop an email to what you see on the screen, I can connect you up with, with folks. Um, another question, how interoperable is fire in practice? <laughs> that sounds like somebody that's um, got practical experience. Uh, I think if you're, there's an old saying about standards that the great thing about standards is that there's so many to choose from. Uh, uh, fire has been much better in, at least in my experience, than, for example, HL7 2.5, where uh, we almost never see someone that has see a system that speaks you know, pure HL7. There's always some variant, some changes. So we've learned how to be, uh, how to pick up those things and be very interoperable. We constantly are at these, uh, what are called connectathons. Fire also has variants. There's still, there's more and more country variants. Uh, there's a difference in practice. Uh, it is a more modern standard. It is definitely more interoperable. Uh, but I would say that um, it's still the case that just because someone says they have fire doesn't mean they have fire that works or that talks to other people. Um, any other questions? Can Jeff talk a bit more about how ML in the intersystem tool sets helps to get better data diagnosis? And how InterSystem Suite helps to promote data interoperability. Uh, well, I guess you, if you wind me up, I can talk about those subjects for a long time. Uh, so the uh, use of machine learning and the integrated ML that I described uh, is horizontal. It can be used in almost any uh, area and it is like all machine learning fueled by data. So if you, uh, if you have uh, reasonable data, one of the things that InterSystems spends a lot of time on is what we call uh, healthy data, uh, techniques for improving the data uh, and for uh, for aggregating it, collecting it, preparing it, and uh, helping you with, with data cleansing that then helps machine learning be more effective. Uh, and the medical domain, there's uh, many, many, many applications from operational things like readmission or predicting length of stay in a hospital to, um, to diagnoses on on images, the, the, the Canon and high medical examples I had. Um, there's a, a question about, um, there's a question about whether my email is missing an S and the answer is yes. That this should say intersystems.com, not intersystem. Thank you. And um, how do you explain that most software systems in healthcare are using HL7 rather than Fire? Uh, it's a, that's a good question. I think it's a matter of time. Uh, the, especially in a regulated industry like healthcare, things may move uh, more slowly. And many of our customers have thousands of let's say a lab system, you know, Roche is a, is a big customer, um, including in, in Spain, by the way, 
and um, they have thousands of lab systems distributed. So fire is new and therefore a small fraction of systems that are deployed are actually fire capable. And that's why we think it's so important to be able to, to uh, transform back and forth from fire to older protocols. Uh, and I think it's a couple more questions, which are great. Um, thank you very much as one is, is your system working in Saudi Arabia? And there, the answer again is yes. Uh, our track care system in particular is very strong in the Middle East and has a, a lot of uh, deployments in Saudi Arabia. Uh, and we do have a, an office there as well. Um, do you think that DICOM 2020 will be integrated into IRIS for Health 2020? Uh, and that, uh, I will say I'm responsible for our, our roadmap. I'm not sure we'll finish it within 2020 because DICOM 2020 is, is, uh, is quite new, uh, but we're aiming to, in fact, be done this year and support that standard. Uh, so we, we have a, a few minutes left, but um, I think it probably is a good time, Walt, to, to wrap up and let people know where they can, uh, uh, where, what they can do next. Well, thank you, Jeff, and thank you, Leanne. Uh, that was some great information. Uh, we hope everyone who attended enjoyed today's webinar. Uh, as a reminder, for any questions that we weren't able to address, uh, please forward them to the email addresses you see on your screen. As a reminder, the email address for Jeff is jeff.freed at intersystems.com. Add the S to intersystem. Uh, again, jeff.freed at intersystems.com. Uh, hope everyone enjoyed the webinar. Thank you again, Jeff. Thank you again, Leanne and uh, enjoy your day.